Hello and welcome to Blue Zone. In this video, we're going to talk about scenario files. What that is, it's a new feature that uh, VRS has added to the tag pack uh, since version 1.4.2.2. And uh, what it does is it allows you to place SAMs, boats, planes, uh, drones, and a carrier in the place of your choosing and you can set some parameters for those objects to move the way you want them to and we'll get into more details it's pretty exciting stuff and I've uh, also uh, recently saw that uh, the C CCP uh, the carrier and convoy uh, planner is actually starting to use the TPS files to do all kinds of neat stuff so it's a uh, it's gonna understanding how the scenario files work will help you uh, get full potential out of uh, what they can do and possibly help you with the C CCP and customize uh, what you're trying to do. So let's do like we do with all the other videos. Let's get the objectives out of the way. Learn how to create and use scenario files. And it's useful to place targets, uh, place different assets from TACPAC anywhere in the FSX map and you can use it in single player mode you can also use it in multiplayer session that you're hosting and it says here or a host allowing it in version 1.4.2.3 uh, they added the ability to load a TPS file on somebody else's server being hosted uh, where there's a session being hosted as long as they enable it And it's also used, as indicated, in Carry and Convoy Planner. It's uh, something new since the latest version of uh, the CCP. I'm not going to cover this in this video. Perhaps I'll make a video on CCP later on. Here are some limits. You can only have a total of 100 AI boats, where, uh, or a combination of moving or stationary. And the AI boats will only work in single player mode. You will not see them in multiplayer. There's a maximum of 100 plane flying or on the ground. Now I'm talking about the AI plane. You can still have uh, one tanker besides that. It does not count as part of those AI planes. You can have a maximum of 10 SAMs which are basically limitations of tag pack. That's what they have set as maximums. One tanker and one drone. So you have the possibility of having 212 targets in your, play, uh, in your session, in a single player session, and 112 in a multiplayer session. Don't know why you would, but it's good to know. Important notes. This feature is not supported by VRS. So unless it crashes your simulation, don't even bother asking. They will, they will not answer you. They, they don't want to support it, and they made it clear that it is not supported unless it crashes the simulation. You can make requests for additional uh, features. Uh, just expect them uh, to be low priority. In other words, if you believe in Santa Claus, maybe it will happen. And it can be run a command line. For those who run servers and restart them on a daily basis, it could be tedious. But they've actually added a switch that you can use to load, load it at command line. And here's the, the switch. Where whatever your sim simulator is, which is a FS, uh, fsx.exe for most people, but if you're using other, uh, like a prepare 3D or what have you, or Steam, might be different and the switch is uh, dash VRS TP which I'm assuming stands for that pack underscore scenario and then simply the path to your scenario file notice the scenario file ends with TPS so it has to have a dot TPS at the end AI boats let's take a look uh, they're only in sing single player mode now there's a block for a stationary boat and, what I, and you see there's a, a number zero, zero. Well, if you added more than one boat, it w your next block would have simple AI underscore boat underscore zero one. 
then the next one would be 0, 2, 0, 3, so on and so forth until you get to 99 for your maximum 100. Now there's a title cargo A. I will show you where to get that. You have the lat long. Notice here those are degree decimals. If you don't understand how to uh, get those for to place the object where you want to, I recommend uh, listening to my uh, GPS coordinate video. I explain how to get those lat longs exactly the format that you want and you can use them in here. In this case here it's going to uh, be pointing to uh, a true north so notice here the heading is in true degrees not in magnetic degrees. So there's if there's a magnetic deviation so in in simulation it will be it will be off the zero by whatever the magnetic dis, uh, deviation is as of 2006 which is when FSX was uh, actually done. And a speed zero knots means it's going to be stationary. Now there's a lot, uh, you're going to see a lot of things that are looking very similar. So there's not much changes between the objects. So if you understand this part here, this one's going to be easy. I have a different boat here and it's a boat zero one. And the only thing different is the speed. I change the speed. Now they're shattering. Now the title where it says cargo A and cargo B, you would get that information, let's say if you want to select the boat that you want, go into your FSX folder under sim objects and under boat. And in the boat of your choice, open up the, the boat uh, folder, not the boat folder itself, but the specific boat that you want. For example, here I'm opening up the cargo B folder. And in the sim.cfg, you will see title equal. Now for this boat that we're putting in, it's, it says flight sim decimal zero title equal cargo B. That's the one that will show up as cargo B as the moving object. If you were going to a different uh, FLT sim decimal three, which is a different uh, variation of the same boat, it would have uh, probably uh, some other name you pick whatever name you want from the the one that says title equal and then we'll put that boat with that library. AI planes. Now the AI planes have a little bit different uh, format. If you look at the the title is different. It says simple AI aircraft 01. Title Airbus A321. It works identical to the boat that we just looked at. Notice it accepts spaces. So it's exactly how it is in the file that you put in here at the title. Lat long, same thing. The heading true degrees works the same way as the boat. It's based on true degrees. And on ground means that airplane is on the ground equal one. Is on the, pla the plane's on the ground and not moving. Now the next one uh, I put the simple AI aircraft zero zero. This one is a Muni Bravo, which is a a plane. It's a prop plane. Uh, the latitude long same works the same way. Now altitude M. What they mean here it's an altitude in meters. So you can go in Google and find eagle to uh, meters to feet conversion, and you can put whatever altitude you want in here. So this here that uh, Rule of thumb, uh, one one meter is about three feet. So multiply uh, multiply by three, and you'll get your approximate altitude. But if you want to be accurate, use Google. Use your friend. Uh, heading in true degrees. Once again, it's not magnetic. It's true degrees. And KTAS. So knots in true airspeed. So it's not uh, it's not ground speed. It's true airspeed. So it is different than uh, indicated airspeed and calibrated airspeed. It is close, but not exact. So do your research and f you should be able to figure this out pretty easily. Now where you'd find those plane files, uh, you would go to the FSX folder in your sim object under airplanes. In this case here, I picked the uh, Airbus A321 on purpose just to show you. So in the Airbus 321 folder, there's an aircraft config file. You open that, and then in this case here, there's multiple libraries. In other words, uh, multiple 
Airbus A321 that look different. In this case here, the one that was picked for this example is the third livery down. So notice the previous uh, one we had the FLT Sim Decimal Zero. Well, in this case here, I picked FLT Sim Decimal Three, and the name is Airbus uh, Space A321. That is what will show up uh, in the air. Uh, sorry, on this case here on the ground with that library. Other objects. Carrier. Now the carrier uh, underscore zero zero, you can only have one carrier. So you'll never have a carrier underscore zero one. Just limitation of tag pack and it, we can't uh, circumvent those. Index zero. Index equals zero. The index, if you look in your tag pack, whatever order you have in your carriers, the index number starts at zero. So let me give you an example. In my list in my tag pack, uh, when I look at my carriers, my first one on my list is the acceleration carrier. That would be index zero. The second one on my list is uh, Nimitz empty. If I wanted to use Nimitz empty here, I would change the index and make it index equal one. So it starts counting at zero and it's uh, it works like that throughout the objects. So the first object in that choice will be a zero, the second the second one in the list would be a one and so on and so forth. Lat long you already know that. The heading through you know that already. The speed in knots is the speed in knots the carrier will travel. The team, that's the team that's assigned the F IFF uh, when you set your IFF to uh, 2,001, uh, you end up in Team 2. Well, this is what that is. It gives a carrier a specific team to be on. Point defense state. And that one, if it's set to, it's set to 0 in this case here. But if it was set to 1 and you were on Team 2 and you approach this carrier, it will shoot at you. If you approach this carrier as a team one and the point of defense state is set at one, you're friendly, it will not shoot at you. The next one below it, the frequency ILS, the straight ILS frequency here, no problem. Now you look here, frequency tech N equal 108.10. Say, so wait a minute, I don't have 54 X-ray or I don't have 57 Yankee. Uh, what you need to do in this case here and go, go into the uh, the actual uh, VRS uh, help in your, and you can find uh, the, the table of conversion from tech and to frequencies. That's what you have to use here to, dis to uh, set your frequency to the proper tech end that you want. Now here, not much difference, uh, very similar to what we just talked about, right? So you have the index, you know how to figure out first taker on the list is zero, second taker on the list is one, so on and so forth. Altitude in meters, right? So this here would be approximately 18,000 feet. Uh, heading through, it's the same. Now notice here the difference. Uh, it's a knots in indicated airspeed. So when you fly your superbug, if if you look in your superbug, you have indicated airspeed. It will be the same. So if you fly fly to the tanker, this tanker should be going at 250 knots indicated airspeed, and your superbug should match. Team 3 means which team the tanker is on. Orbit type. Now the orbit type, you have to look at your list in the menu for orbit type when you try to put out a tanker. One is NATOP, another one, uh, they have different distances that they, they orbit. So you want to uh, actually check that list and decide what you want. I believe one is uh, NATOPs. And frequency tag in. 108.00, so that works exactly the same as the carrier. You need to look at the chart to convert the TACAN uh, channel that you want into a frequency here. The drone. The drone, not much different than the other ones we just talked about, except the behavior. Once again, if you look in your, in your menu selection, all the behaviors that are in there, like the random and what have you, Go the top of the list is zero, the next one is one, the next one is two. So pick the one that you want here for the drone. 
and it will behave and start wherever you tell it at whatever altitude. Okay, so that concludes the uh, looking at the, the objects themselves that are placed into a file. So essentially the only thing that uh, uh, the file contains is a multitude of these blocks that we just looked at. So let's go see it in action in FSX so you can see how easy it is to bring it in and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I have loaded a, I have uh, opened up a TPS file that I will put into FSX for the purpose of this demo. You will notice here that I have some aircraft on the ground. I have a numerous amount of them, eight to be exact. And below that, I have uh, some aircrafts that are flying with a little bit of distance uh, beside them so they, they don't knock into each other. But I have, uh, have four of them flying together. I also have a tanker and I have a carrier. Now you'll notice that my index on the tanker is 2 and for me that's KC-135 and my index number on the carrier is 1 which is my Nimitz empty. Now you also notice that the lat long that I have on the uh, tanker is identical to the lat long that I have on the carrier. So what that means is that they will synchronize and the tanker will follow the carrier throughout. And lastly, I have four SAMs turned on that are enabled and uh, on the ground. I actually put them in the, the DARE range. Once we load them, uh, you will be able to see. So let's go take a look in FSX and see what we got. So in FSX, you see here, there's one of the their range. That's the north their range. And over here, I have the south their range. I've put a bunch of targets on here. And you'll see here, if you pay attention to this area here and the area on the other side, I've put two planes on each side. I've also put some SAM, a SAM at the crossroad here and a SAM in the bullseye here. But you may not be able to see those until, we, uh, until I show you. So let's see how we add a TPS file in FSX. It's actually very simple. You go to the add-on menu, go to VRS miscellaneous, select number nine, which is debug, and then select scenario. You'll be presented with a browser and browse through to find your files and select the TPS you want to load. Now, once the TPS is loaded, notice here, Tanker 63 will orbit Carrier 62. So that, that's saying that it, it's going to be in sync with the tanker. The, I mean, the, carriers, the tanker is going to be in sync with the carrier. Now, notice uh, something different here. The, there's two planes here. It's small and it's in white. And there's two planes on the other side as well. So those are simple AIs on the ground that I have placed. Now we can't see the SAM here, but I will go take a look. Uh, so let's view uh, the SAM. They actually look quite nice. So go to AI traffic. Now you see all that we have put in. All the MIGs, the KC-135 tanker, and whatnot. So let's uh, take a look, uh, first of all, at the one of the SAM. And you can see the SAM here in all his glory and uh, that's one that happens to be on the bullseye. So there's all the SAMs and you can also go view uh, let's watch uh, one of the MIGs flying. You can also go view our tanker which was our KC-135 is flying around. This one has a drogue but bear in mind if the ones that extend drogues may not have the drogue extended, you'll need to manually extend the drogue. Uh, I have no way to show you the, uh, the carrier, and I'm sure you trust me that the carrier is out. One way, one way you can find out for sure is you can look at your carrier and have it tell you the position, and you'll see it's all loaded and it should have all your settings. And you see the carrier is up and running. And that is it for the TPS files. There is, uh, that's all there is to it.
you can be very creative and remember you cannot put boats in multiplayer I did not show boats here because I don't use them I only do multiplayer but you can put boats in multiplayer they go in straight line they don't turn and the planes you put in they don't turn either but uh, the, uh, the CCP uh, carrier and convoy planner actually starting to use TPS files and they have planes that follow courses and whatnot so anyways more videos to follow if you enjoyed my video please uh, click like and subscribe and had a blast have a great day